titration, as it says here, is a technique where we can use the known concentration of one solution to find the concentration of another solution. There are two basic types of titration. One is acid base um, and one is redox, but they follow the same principles. In order to carry out, carry out a titration, you're going to need to be able to measure your volumes and your concentrations very precisely. So we use a burette. The burette has a tap, so it allows us to add our solution very, very slowly and a scale that allows us to read it off very precisely. And our second solution will be in our conical flask. We usually have a white tile underneath our conical flask so that we can see any colour changes very, very um, clearly. So, for example, if this was an acid base titration, let's say we've got sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide, then one of those solutions, let's put the acid, could go into the burette and into the conical flask, we would have the alkali, in this case sodium hydroxide, plus a few drops of indicator. And essentially what we're going to do is to add the acid to the alkali very slowly. Um, and the minute that the indicator changes colour, we can stop the titration and we can figure out how much acid was required to neutralise our alkali. It's as straightforward as that. So let's have a look at a typical acid base titration calculation. So we have got... 27.2 centimetres cubed of the acid required to neutralise 25 centimetres cubed of the alkali. The first thing we're going to need, as always, is a balanced equation. So if I start with that, sulfuric acid, we're in solution, so everything is aqueous. Sodium hydroxide, aqueous, to form sodium sulfate. Acid and base, salt and water, and water. First thing to be clear about, please, please make sure that you have got the formula of your salts correct, because if the formula isn't correct, it is really, really hard to balance an equation. So to make this balance, I'm going to need two sodium hydroxide, and we'd also end up with two waters. So the next step is to sort out our information. Um, I'm a big fan of setting things out neatly in a way that allows us to follow our own working if we get lost. So let's start with the acid. I know that I have a volume of 27.20 centimetres cubed and a concentration of 0 0.103 mol per decimeter cubed. Okay, so that's my sulfuric acid. Let's have a look at my sodium hydroxide. All I know about this is my volume. My volume is 25.0 centimetres cubed and the concentration is unknown. This is what we've been asked to find. If I have both a volume and a concentration, I can always find the number of moles. So the number of moles of the acid equals concentration times volume, 0 0.103 moles per decimeter cubed times my volume, 27.20. Now, we need our units to be the same. At the moment, I have got a volume in centimetres cubed and a concentration per decimeter cubed. So I need to divide my volume by a thousand. Okay, there are a thousand centimetres cubed and decimeter cubed. This is something that you're just expected to know at this stage. So if I plug that into my calculator, I know the number of moles of acid used in this titration, 0.0, .0 28016 moles. I'm not doing any rounding up until I get to the end. So how do I work out the number of moles of the alkali? Well, number of moles is going to equal, well, let's have a look. My balanced equation tells me that one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide but I haven't got 
one mole of sulfuric acid, I've got 0.028016. I've just worked that out. I'm going to have twice as many moles of the sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles is going to be equal to 0.028016 times 2, 1 to 2 ratio, 0.0056032. So I can now work out the concentration. The concentration equals moles divided by volume. And I know the number of moles of alkali I use, 0.0056032. The volume is 25 centimetres cubed. Once again, I need to divide that by 1,000, turn it into decimeters cubed. And when I put that into my calculator, it comes out as 0 0.224 mole per decimeter cubed. OK, so nice and straightforward. Just to point out here that I have quoted my final answer to three significant figures because four sig fig, three sig fig, three sig fig. You cannot quote your answer to more significant figures than the least precise piece of information that was put into your original calculation, in this case, three.